dudes, it's totally rad! Most excellent, dude. Dude! It's a game developed by ICOM and published in PAL territories of Ajalico in 1990. I used to hire this game a lot from Video Easy back in the day. Remember those crappy plastic cases with the built-in manuals? It's PERMASTRUCT! The game was localised for the West with a satirical take on 80s and 90s surfer culture, which is not present in the Japanese version, titled Magic John. Many games on the NES were changed drastically for the West, the most famous example being Super Mario Bros. 2, which is actually just the retooled Doki Doki Panic. Checking the release dates leads me to believe that they got the idea from the recently released Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. And it most certainly channels that Dude. vibe, man. Dude. Dude. Just check out that manual. It's way overdone, and it manages to have as much text as an RPG manual. Goes on and on. Like, who's this guy? The writer's boss? Why is he in here? He definitely ain't totally rad. Now his girlfriend too? Dude, stop. Dude. So as the story goes, Jake, a most excellent... Dude meets a strange old man named Jebediah. They for some reason begin hanging out together. Eventually it's revealed that he comes from an underground zone near the San Andreas Fault and possesses a strange power that allows him to shapeshift and call upon elemental forces. He then decides to train Jake, believing him to have gnarly potential. So who is this Zeb guy anyway? He looks like a full on tripper. So they're out training one day Zeb talking about how the legs are the first thing to go. He's right about that. Spot on, Zeb. And all of a sudden they're attacked and away we go. Running from right to left, you'll jump and blast your way through five worlds of crazy enemies, all the while utilising a surprising array of magical abilities. Jake can stop time, heal himself, cast screen filling magic and if need be, shapeshift into various forms that will help negotiate all of the perilous platforming conundrums you're going to have to face. Check this into you there. Welcome to die. So they've taken Jake's girlfriend. Ugh, oh, surprise surprise. Now we're going through the big top. Lots of different types of things around and... <gasps> ah! Clowns! Are you still scared of clowns? Yeah. Oh, and did you hear? They're bringing out a new IT movie. No, man. The enemy placement can get annoying at times. There's nowhere to move around here. And they're firing off missiles at home in on you. Ah, where does this lead us? Oh, mate, look at that! So this is the caliber of enemy that Jake is up against. He looks positively whacked. Oh, he mustn't have liked that comment. But eventually... Yeah, take that! Woo! Yeah, you don't say Zeb. Go have a magic mushroom. You are a magic mushroom. And can you please stop raising your eyebrows at me over and over? It's really creeping me out. Here we go, level two. Wow, listen to that music. Oh, look at this guy. He looks like Elvis. Like a strange cybernetic version of him. Is this what happened to him? He got taken underground and then morphed into this? Ah, oh, he's running at me! Fucking hell, man. Elvis is hard as fuck. Everybody was Down into the sewers. Better try out some of this health magic. It seems that it's best to use the half health file. Full heart's just a waste as it drains too much magic power. Another mini boss. There's so many bosses in this game and they're all of a high quality. Oh man, he's grotesque. This is Biclops. He's actually a really difficult boss. Gotta bust up that cybernetic leg of his, and then try and avoid the shots from the eye while you return fire in eagle form. Yeah, yeah, kick his ass. Oh, what? We already got Allison back. Cool. But now her dad's been kidnapped in her place, and it seems like that's who they were truly after. On to World 3. 
In this world it's really important to use the frog power early on. Not only does it help you swim underwater, but it's also got one of the most powerful weapons in the game. Yeah, it's just overall a good power and... Ah! Beat the giant scorpion and then jump down the hole into the underground waterway. This place is pretty gnarly. Just gotta go along the top as best you can. Near the end of the section you can jump into the water and there you've gotta take on a weird, mean, underwater Cthulhu creature. Now it's onto the waterfall. Just keep dropping down and avoiding enemy fire. Actually, the music in this section is awesome too. The music in the whole game is pretty stellar. Kazuo Sawa, you're a magician, just like on Battle of Olympus and Nastianax. This massive fish guards the exit to World 3, and he is a tough one. Make sure you use your frog form. So with him defeated, Zeb decides to open up a little bit about what's been going on. It seems a strange ancient underground race has been eyeing Earth's surface for quite a while now. They kidnapped Allison's father to try and learn as much as they could about us. Here in Act 4, the challenge really starts to ramp up. Half of the normal enemies are bosses. And there's these insane platforming sections as well, where you've got to keep dodging these really annoying nut sacks on propellers. You take on this armoured boss that won't seem to die. Finally, he reveals his weak point and away you go. This annoying ice section can be a real problem if you don't use the eagle. Just fly over everything, no cares in the world. Watch out for the surprisingly cute little crocodiles down the bottom of the screen there. Smash the huge boss quick, smart, and get in there. Final level. This level's definitely the most graphically impressive in the whole game. By this point in time, developers were really tapping into that nest power. Seriously, some of the imagery on this game wouldn't look out of place on a Mega Drive or a SNES. You gotta take this guy out before you get to the final boss and he's a real pain. Just unleash every single attack that you have in your arsenal. We'll try out the fire, our water power, the strange Bill Cosby shaped hurricane, and our giant rock summon. Finally he goes down, and here we go. Final boss. He is massive, and definitely the most impressive sprite in the entire game. And this guy, Edergy, he spills the beans about Zed finally. You can see a huge face sitting inside this glass case and he's protecting it with the sword. Definitely one eagle again. Almost got him, and he grows a set of wheels and his whole life bar back. Fuck! Still gonna get him though. Come on, come on, yeah, that's it, done. You're dead, totally rad. And everyone celebrates, and it's a little bit teary-eyed and sad. Aww. Most excellent. All's excellent that ends excellent. I want the last 12 hours of my life back. 